Hello guys, welcome to another time out with me on the channel. My name is Alec Godwin if you're here for the first time. And today we are taking a look at uh, how to get, make this guy, the Ursa 12K, full control using the ATEM mini switcher and software. Okay, so on here I'm using the ATEM software. And I think I'm rolling with that now. Good. So I can switch between the cameras. I have two cameras active now. Besides this, this is on. So camera one is where we are now. So this is camera one, camera two, and three shows my setup over there. And excuse me for the rough connection. I have to make it happen. And um, I've got wires and cables all over the place, <laughs> in fact. Uh, I don't expect everything to go as planned, but we'll do it. I haven't spent enough time with my ATEM Mini yet. I'm not the pro yet uh, uh, that I want to be. Um, but let's get it on. Uh, so to get this stuff, because uh, why am I doing this? I already have the Ursa 12K for those of you who already know. I had it before I got the studio uh 6k pro but now i'm like i know i need more cameras to support that in the live production um of course i have the sony but if just in case i need to do the black magic you know system together I'm, I'm like how can i get this guy involved uh of course you can switch if you can switch a sony camera you can switch a black magic okay you just need to get uh, the sdi from this because we are talking about the mini pro also, uh, the ATEM Mini Pro it uses uh, HDMI, so we needed to convert the SDI to HDMI so they can, so we can switch it. Okay, that's the only challenge you will get from here. So there are several ways to do it. You could connect it to uh, a monitor, external monitor like this, and have your HDMI come from there to your switcher. That's one way. It will work, um, but um you can also use something like this which is an old uh, micro i think this is probably the first sdi to hdmi converter so um you will need power it powers one hdmi out sdi in and sdi out so um it was just basic it was one way it works i tried it it worked but it worked only in HD, which is 1080p, and it won't allow the control of this uh, camera. Now, I didn't think that was possible. I did not think that was possible. What I really wanted was a 4K recorder, so that if I do need to broadcast with a lot and everything ready to go uh, for, you know, live stream and, um, um not just live stream podcast where i want to get the video ready already with um live switching and lots in this in the stream and then at 4k which is um ultra hd so i went for this okay this is that's where this guy comes in all right this is about I'll write it on the screen, I'll show you from the Amazon page, but probably about 49, 50 bucks, something like that. And this is, this one is uh, 179. Okay, I'm going to try and show, I'm going to try and get uh, a footage, it's already connected. I'll talk about the connection in a second. Let me take a video clip. Okay, that's the video. Micro converter by directional SDI to HDMI 12G. Uh, I think there's a HD. I think there's a HD version. But this guy can switch in Ultra HD, which is a 12G um, SDI converter. It has the in and out connections, SDI in, SDI out, and then HDMI out. It's always going to be one HDMI out. And... Um, it's portable. It's a lot smaller than the, than the the one I just showed you. Nothing much. It still has to get power, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm using this power cable from. Uh, um, I'm using a power power bank, and there it is. That's my power bank. Excuse my wires. Yep. 
this is how this device comes okay I'm gonna read some of the things it talks about on the stuff it says simultaneously convert SDI to HDMI and HDMI to SDI in, H in SD, HD or Ultra HD format uh, all at the same time that you can do it includes of course the international power the way they come and um, so if you have enough cable or connection you could power it directly instead of using USB but that's the good thing USB type C connection can always make me use the power back all right they say powers um, the features include powers from USB C source uh, convert in both directions independently uh, uh, 12 G SDI works in all formats up to 2160 at uh, 60 frames per second supports black magic camera control and tally light we're going to see that in a second uh, actually you already we already have the tally light uh green on this because uh yeah we have green here so if you look on here we have green okay and later on we when we switch let me switch now and get this out of the way uh to camera three if camera 3 is active that's why I have this this camera so if camera 3 is active we have it it's gonna go oh, I'll switch from here all right so we are live with camera 3 okay so it goes green so that tally tells so that tells the operator you are live okay um, it's not the best it's not like uh, it's not like that one that's why that is better for studio but you could do a run as long as you're behind the camera here yeah, you could take note of the of the stuff too um, so I'm already recording my screen I'm going to show you what I'm doing on the screen and and uh, so um, I want to adjust settings now look on the screen we have uh, exposure at 0 dB we want to step that up a bit so that is two and we know that actually zero db is um 400 iso you know we'll go up a little bit you know so we see the the exposure going higher we'll go up all the way to 18 because we can do 400 or 32 18 is 32 which is the second base iso for the for the CSK pro so i'm going to you see this place now filtered as the ND stops okay so I'm gonna add one stop of ND so we're taking it down add two stop okay this is a little bit too dark okay I don't even know anymore I'll have to get up and go check but we don't have the time for that so I'm gonna leave it at a stop down okay I'll leave it at uh, a stop down so we have a brighter image with one stop of ND so you can control the ND uh, right there uh, what else can we do let's see we can do everything <laughs> everything everything that's available for camera control we can do it here we can go to the gamma and adjust uh, the colors so we can make it tint okay oh, no, I went back to nothing happens for the Sony camera so you could you go you go wave and do and touch all the buttons you like nothing's gonna happen it's gonna go in the same preset from the, directly from the camera all right so everything works on this guy now i don't expect everything to work on this guy but something's too um so let's let's test that right now so if we switch to camera three we are looking at the camera from which we are recording so that's where this guy is coming in on the screen on the lens here um it's the sigma 18 to 35 so we should be able to have control of the lens yes the here's the thing it works it will be it's nice to have now that's the screen we're going to adjust um same thing the brightness okay so we have brightness going on thanks to this adapter and converter that's working um you can change the exposure in terms of db 
Now for the Ursa, we know that 400 is the best dynamic range, but you know, if, if you are doing live stream and you don't have the option of going to post to get out those tricks, you might want to sort that out live. So let me, let's just see if it controls. Yeah, it's going higher. Two stops, uh, yeah, four dB. So that works. Uh, and then uh, shutter, let's change up the shutter a little bit. Yeah, you see it change. You see it go darker. Okay. So that works, shutter works, color temperature. Let's change that up a little bit. It should go into a school. And then now gradually towards warm. Alright, so it's getting warmer now. Okay. Um, well, we're at 9400K. So let's go back. You know, the funny thing is. The camera is so obedient you can't even control it from here. If you try to watch this, try to let's say go on the menu here, which is not necessary anyway. Then you just go if you go on the screen, for example, you see my ISO, ISO at 400. If you increase it to 800, it jumps back to 400. If you go down to 200, it jumps back to 400. Go to 3002. It stays. It won't. It won't stay in place. As soon as you leave it, it goes back. You touch. It goes for a second, and goes comes back because it's obedient to this guy, the ATM. So ATM, the ATM has control indeed. Um, if you try the f-stop, if you want to go from a different f-stop, you go there. It comes back. Once connected to this ATM software. To the ATM Mini, even the hardware or the software, even if the software is not on and this guy is connected to the ATM, all controls come from the ATM. And that's where communication is good and we'll talk about talk back some other time uh, because you may want to change some things and this guy doesn't give actual full uh, control over this guy. So is it really necessary to control from the board? Unless you have somebody that's not experienced enough to handle the camera, then you can do all oh, it's not paying attention and you see the need to expose better, then you do that from that. That can be done. I don't even think you need anything besides the controls that work. Um, let's find out what doesn't work. Okay, what you can control from here. I'm going to just uh, uh, click on the gamma here and we're going to drag this and see nope nothing happens now this is not i don't think this is the case when i just got it i was so excited my setup was over there in uh, in the other space and uh, i was so excited as soon as i got it i just wanted to try it i connected the wires and did all the connection like i thought it should be which is one SDS and one SDI 12G to the camera, um, the camera out and then in here and then out the HDMI to the switcher. That's the connection I did and I tested it and right there and then it worked with one cable and it worked perfectly. The only thing that won't work is the start, stop, and ND filter. You can't control the ND filter from there because this is a physical, it's not digital like the Cisco 6K Pro. Um, so when I came over to this setup and I reconnected everything, same setup, same wire, I probably missed, uh, maybe what's changed is this uh, cable. Maybe the SDI cable changed, I don't know, I don't think so. But however, I had to do it the way that Don Lawson, Don, okay, his name, is, I skipped it again, I missed it again. So I had to do it the way he did it, and I connected two wires, same way that he said from a long video, uh, an old video, and it worked. That's what we are doing, you see I did the in and out, and then right here we have both, both connections i have two this is these are two sdi cables everything worked beside the gamma and this uh, color control which is not a big deal 
I believe somebody can figure out what I'm doing wrong or what went wrong or if it's the cable or if the HDMI and that's what I wanted to share with you guys pretty much okay that's the bottom line thank you guys for watching like subscribe as I said before and I'll see you in the next one peace